In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to wirelessly transmit a video feed thanks to this Hollyland Mars 400S wireless transmission system. This works for both HDMI and also SDI. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, folks. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and also click the bell. So this particular setup solves a number of different problems. So this works with not only something like the ATEM Mini, where you could get a few of these wireless transmitters and receivers and say film a band and switch cameras with people actually moving around. Another way you can also use this type of system as it carries any HDMI source is you can take anything from a camera, an Xbox or any other source like a computer and transmit that to any input HDMI device. So whether that's a projector, a large screen TV, a computer, an Elgato HD60, or anything else, and it works up to 400 feet. One of the cool things about the Mars Hollyland 500 is the fact that it works with any Sony battery. I had the MPF 970s, which are huge, but you can absolutely use smaller batteries to keep the weight down. But that's all I had, so that's what I'm gonna use. Much like the transmitter, the receiver also works with an MPF style Sony battery. These are third party batteries and I'll get a lot of battery life out of these. These will last for several hours. As you can see on the bottom of the receiver, it's the same for the transmitter. We also get a power adapter port and it comes with a single power supply as well, which I think is a really great addition. Now, if you're running it on a gimbal, odds are you're just gonna run the battery much like how I am right here. But as you can see also on the transmitter, if you're gonna be in a stationary spot, you can, of course, just run it on the power supply if you so choose. Now, the Mars Hollyland 400S supports up to 400 feet line of sight, which is around 120 meters or so. I'll leave the exact conversion on screen. Man, the Imperial system, I never get it right. <laughs> this really is a perfect solution for indie filmmakers, weddings, or just about anyone who wants to not only record internally from the camera, but also send that feed elsewhere. So if you're making a film or something like that, or a short film, and you've got someone sitting behind a monitor, they can see what you see in real time. I think that's really, really cool. Or it can be used simply as a streaming device straight to YouTube, Twitch, or wherever. This HDMI output and transmission system opens up a lot of opportunities. Now in terms of frame rates and resolution, the Mars 400 supports up to 1080p at 60 frames per second or 60 hertz. Now I live in a PAL region here in Australia, so I'll be shooting at 25p or 50p generally, and I won't have any problems handling those frame rates as well. Let's take a quick look at some of the ports on the receiver. We have an SDI output as well as an HDMI output, so it will cover the professional level as well as the consumer and prosumer level, pretty much like what I'm using right now. We have a Type-C USB port here. On the other side, we have an on-off control and we also have the power supply input. The transmitter has exactly the same ports except these are SDI and HDMI inputs. So let's get into this. For this particular test, I'm running the GH5 in 10-bit, 1080p at 25 frames per second. I'm gonna keep this as line of sight as I can. Here we go. I can really see this opening up a world of opportunity when it comes to doing live streams outdoors as opposed to just sitting indoors all of the time. Having a reliable HDMI transmission system like this makes the world a difference. So there you have it, that's a test, basically line of sight. Of course, I couldn't quite see the receiver the entire time, but it should work given that it can handle up to 400 feet with line of sight, no problem. So test number one, 
done. Now there's a couple of clear advantages to the Mars 400S when it comes to live streaming. So if you stream at home to YouTube or Facebook or wherever, you can simply use the exact same setup except now you can take your audience outside for a change of view. That's pretty cool. Another clear advantage is if you've got a 4G hotspot on your mobile phone, for example, you can use an Elgato HD60 capture card or some other device like that take it with you on the go and get some really great mobile streaming and then have the flexibility of being up to 400 feet away from your computer to stream. As long as you've got that line of sight, you'll have great picture quality in HD. So if you're covering an event, for example, and you wanna just stream it live to the web, all you need is the computer, the Elgato HD60 or some sort of capture card, and this transmission system. Overall, that's a really great way of getting great quality stuff straight to the internet. One of the best things about this entire system is the Wi-Fi monitoring via a smartphone, iPad, or Android device. So this is a really cool thing that you can set up nice and simply. All you have to do is scan the QR code in the instruction manual and it will take you to either the iOS or Android shop and you can download the app for free and install it on your phone. You then can scan the QR code on the back of one of the units here and it will allow you to connect to the Wi-Fi. And if it doesn't work, you have to enter the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight manually, and it will go in there, no problems at all. It took me a while to work that out. Now, if we take a look at my mobile phone over here, as you can see, I can see everything that is on my GH5 on screen. Now, if you want a clean HDMI feed out to your phone, you can absolutely do that. You just have to turn that setting on or off in your actual camera. But what I'm seeing on screen right now is exactly what I'm seeing if I look at the little LCD monitor on my camera. So it's exactly the same. This is a wireless solution, which makes it really great. So you're essentially getting not only a wireless send, but you're getting a HDMI send that you can use at the same time. Now I'm looking at my HDMI send on my computer, thanks to the A10 mini, and there's no difference in terms of its latency between what I'm seeing on my phone and what I'm seeing from the hardwired signal into my computer, or if there is a difference, it's almost indistinguishable. I can't see any difference at all. I think maybe there is a slight difference possibly, but it almost looks like to my eye that the phone is slightly ahead of the computer. Maybe the A10 mini has something to do with that whole process, but this works extremely well. Now there's a multitude of different settings within this app, but one of the best things about it, as you can see here, you can simply hit record and record directly to your phone. How great is that? So if you just wanna capture something quickly to a phone, you don't need the computer or anything else, all you need is to be able to send the HDMI signal into the transmitter and then your phone will pick it up and you're good to go. So that's great. And then as you hit stop, it will then come up as the clip that I just had. Now I've got my audio device muted right now so you don't get any echo. So if you are monitoring this in real time with the, with the actual phone, you'll need to wear some headphones to not create that echo loop. Now within the settings of the Holy Land Mars 400S, we get three different available settings. Now these will depend on your particular needs and if you want lower latency. So image mode is the highest quality. We then have balanced mode which is the middle ground. And then we have speed mode, which is the lowest latency when it comes to the HDMI feed, but it comes at the expense of a slight signal degradation. Now, I don't even know if you can really tell the difference, but if HDMI latency is an issue for you and you need to cut that back, then use the speed mode. HDMI latency is always just a little back behind real-time audio, for example. I don't know the exact milliseconds when it comes to HDMI latency, but if that's an issue, you can simply select the appropriate speed mode here and you'll be good to go. Now, in terms of frame rates, these particular units will handle anything from 480. Yeah, that's right, 480, 480, all the way up to 1080p to 50 or 60 frames per second. It also handles 24p, no problems at all, and all the PAL frame rates as 25p and 60, as well as 30 and 60 if you're in the NTSC land. So it will do all those no problems at all. In terms of the weight, the transmitter comes in at 192 grams and the receiver comes in at 189 grams. But with these big ass batteries I put on here, they weigh a whole lot more. So if you're gonna be using these units and you want something light and easy to use, definitely grab some smaller batteries unless you want longevity 
these batteries have been going all day. I've just left these on and they've been going strong. So I've already got a couple of hours use out of these, even off camera, I went up the street, came back, they're still going. So that's a great sign. Now in terms of frame rates, you can see on screen exactly what you're on, 1080p, 25p. Even if my camera, which it is right now, set to 4K 25p, it down samples that back to 1080p without any problem. So in my opinion, that's pretty cool. It means you don't have to continually fiddle with the settings on your camera to get the desired frame rate. You can just leave it set to 4K 30 or whatever, and this will downsample it backwards to 1080. Pretty sweet. Now, the only downside to everything that comes with this pack is you don't get any batteries, but they've played it safe by using the Sony MPF style batteries. I've got the 970s or clones of those off eBay here in Australia I had to purchase them. And I opted for the larger ones, which does come at the expense of extra weight, but it means you can shoot for a far longer time. Now, given that that's the case, battery life's gonna vary depending on the quality and style of the batteries you buy. But being that it takes those Sony batteries, they're really easy to find. Most filmmakers have those lying around. Now, in terms of what we do get in the box, we get the transmitter receiver, we get an assortment of these antennas that just screw in at the top. We also get this mount here, so you can put it on the cold shoe mount of your camera. We also get an included power supply. We get a USB-C to USB port, which I'm probably never gonna use unless I have to update the firmware. We also get this cold shoe mount here, so it makes it easy to attach to the camera as you saw earlier. Or you can essentially set this up so the transmitter is standing vertically, but for me, that just isn't anywhere near as balanced as, th as it was when I ran it this way basically just due to the battery size. If you're into indie filmmaking and you need a reference monitor, or if you need to project a live feed up onto a projector or massive LED screen somewhere up on a wall, like at a church event, for example, these would make that extremely easy. Just having that real time low latency preview window is fantastic. And then being able to record via your phone or record through an ATEM into your computer, or record into from the camera directly all at the same time is great also for redundancy. There's one more thing. Coming up on the next video, I'm gonna be reviewing this. This is the YOLO box, which is a 4G direct to YouTube or Facebook streaming server. But the cool thing is I can use that, which is completely wireless, with this, which is completely wireless, with my GH5. So that'll be the next video, and that will make this whole portable studio thing a heck of a lot easier, but if you don't have that, you can still use a computer to get your stream via a hotspot, for example, up to the web. So overall, this solution in my mind is pretty spectacular. A massive thank you to Eric from Hollyland for sending this out, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, mate. Sorry the batteries took so long to arrive, but eBay is so slow right now. I've had these for a while and I've been dying to make this video because this solves a particular problem that I know a lot of people want solved. Having HDMI cables everywhere sucks. And if you're doing a multi-camera stream, for example, this makes life so much easier than having cables running everywhere. So I think I'm gonna buy a second unit of these just to have in case I do need it. Thanks again for watching, folks. My name's Shane. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And if you wanna find out more about these, links will be in the description below. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.